Hello, g'day. Welcome back to Outside the Box FM. Unknown to Untouchable UD Malila. January's been and gone. Let's show you how we have gotten on. Let's go. Vamos. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome again and g'day. Yeah, January's gone quite well. A clean sweep, a clean sweep. I couldn't be happier. We left you after our, our 1-1 uh, draw with Real Sporting. We had a bit of a two-week break in that, that mid-season break that you have in Spain. After a little patchy run of form as well with the 0-0 uh, Harrow, obviously that that Copa del Rey exit. And then Real Sporting again with a 1-1. Things were getting a little tight at the top. But now we take on Numancia. A 2-1 win. A come from behind victory. This was the impo most important game of all of January. We had to get off on a good foot. And we did. Yes. So 2-1 victory. Chakaroma with the player of the match just before he went off on the African Cup of Nations with Zimbabwe. Yeah, they went up 1-0 early. Carlos Fernandez then getting us level on the 69th minute, and then Chakaroma scoring the winner in the 77th. A good come from behind win, and it couldn't ask for any more from the boys. To come back like that against a really strong team was incredible uh, and really, really impressed with them, really impressed. Then we backed that up with a 3-2 victory over Gugello. Gugello? Gugello, that'll do. Yeah, uh, very, very interesting match this one tony cock putting us in front early with a set piece fernandez then adding to his tally they pulled one back on the 66th minute by david ratchenberg and i thought it was a bit squeaky bum there but john miranda come in and put a 3-1 in front which i thought would seal it and uh, they, they, them getting a, a 90 second minute consolation as well. We had to hold out a couple of minutes, but um, yeah, it was all fine. All fine. Danny Espinar, player of the match. Roman Chihuahua. There's more news on him, but he had a good game. Congratulations, Roman. Then a hugely impressive 3 0 win against Sanse San Sebastian. My old foes who were battling for the top spot early on in the season, but have fallen off somewhat. We had a comfortable win at home. Aspinar, again, how many times can I praise this man? He has just been incredible. Look at these stats every time. He just kills it. Yeah, if he's not getting sold for big money or staying with us all the way to the top, then, you know, I don't know. I don't know. And lastly, our last match of January on the 31st, a nice comfortable 2-0 win against Unionistas. Chakaroma back from international duty with a great game and a goal. And Rame. Picking up with a goal and some key passes as well. Player of the match, incredible, incredible stuff. Really, really good. Uh, you might have noticed a couple of uh, names, well, one name in particular that is differing from the usual. Let's take you through some of the transfer business after we show you the table. Yes, we're still on top. Cultural Leonessa also having a really, really good January, staying with us all the way. We're 54 points, two points in front. We are running away with it a little bit. If Cultural Leonessa can just f*** off. <laughs> Look at that. Four wins out of four from them as well. <laughs> They're in great form. It's going to be a very interesting battle when we take them on second last game of the season. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, so they are uh, really, really uh, tagging alongside us. It's going to be an interesting battle. All right, our trend, uh, we didn't do too much in January uh, transfer-wise, um, but we did more outs than ins for sure. First off, Deco. Deco has been sold to Fuenlabrada for 10k. Just had to get him off the books just to try to make some money. He was a bit part player. I'm comfortable with the amount of midfielders I have in, in, in the squad. So he was just... Purely money coming in. Uh, I, I want to get away from paying people too much money. The saddest part is Isaac Ruiz, the fan who tweeted the, to the club 
that he wouldn't be happy if Deco was sold because he just bought him on his on the back of his shirt. Yeah, the club doesn't do refunds, mate. Unlucky. Um, you'll have to just deal with it. You just deal with it. Sorry, mate. Uh, yes, next, Jordi Ortega. He's gone on loan to FC Andorra. Uh, just, just a bit part player this season. I mean, he's got the ability, doesn't he? Yeah, uh, he just wasn't getting a look in. In that role where Mark Milligan's played, I prefer Mark. And Montessi Farah is the backup for that position because they're better on the ball. Simple as that. He just wasn't getting a look in. And his 1.4k a week is getting paid by FC Andorra, so I'm happy that he's that he's gone just to to ease the wages. And uh, yeah, unlucky or Geordie, he did actually do quite well for us. Yeah, he did quite well for us last season, but a casualty of the old finances, I think. And lastly, Roman f***ing Chihuahua decided to sign a contract. He was on a non-contract, and I understand that. So he was free to be poached. Yeah, Sam Tredier picked him up on the last day of the transfer window. Basically, he was offered... A contract on maybe the 29th or 30th maybe the day before so I was like right okay go and look for a right back Luke because it is not as he's not too important to keep uh, so if I could get someone that's equal or better than him great so I went went out found two that I would have loved uh, Flavio and another guy the older guys lots of experience would have come in and done a job for the for the last few months of the season so they, were, they accepted the contracts. They, they wanted to sign on non-contracts. Fantastic. And that was the last day of the season. So I... And it was before Roman accepted the contract from Sam Tredia. So I had to cancel them because I had to... as a must respond. And just thought Roman would, would have stayed because he hadn't signed already. But yeah, he signed literally in the last hour of deadline day and gave me no time to replace him which was fantastic. Thanks, Roman. However, it's not all doom and gloom. So you're going to be wondering who most of these players are. Basically, they're the reserve team, the B team. But I did promote from the B team to the first team to replace these three boys. Uh, first off, Carlos Gonzalez comes in from the B team. Yeah, he's pretty good. 23. A, g a good uh, wing option. We Needed a bit of depth out there. Three-star current ability, four-star potential on 100 quid a week. Um, good technique, decent pace, crossing, all that good stuff. And he's got a goal for us already as well. Uh, and uh, 7.15 average rating from his two performances. So he's done pretty well. And I think he may just be ahead over uh, some of my other wingers. So I'm happy I've promoted him. He's actually quite a good player. Paul Akuku is my Jordi Ortega replacement and Deco replacement, kind of. He's definitely more of a centre-back in my eyes, but he can also back up in the midfield areas. This bloke... <laughs> so he was in the B team. I promoted him. He immediately said he wasn't happy because he wasn't a regular starter. Immediately became unhappy. And kept getting unhappy. Uh, he was on the he was on the loan list, so he was unhappy. He was on, putting on he was on the loan list, even though he'd been on the loan list for the whole time. So then he was he couldn't settle, so I had to sign a, another Ivorian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's been a bit of a nightmare. And I I regret p promoting him because even though he's a good player and he will be a good backup centre back, he's just a Debbie Downer, any? Yeah. So with that in mind, I had to, uh, yeah, sign a, uh, si sign a, an, a, an Ivorian who's gone in the B team. So he said he's settled now, but pff, who knows? And then lastly, I promoted Antonio Ponce from the B team, who's going to be my backup right back. Yeah, the the only thing I could do. <laughs> he's all right. He's not too bad. He's more of a, uh, a wing back, I guess. He's just going to be there if Donut gets injured, really. I don't really want to rely on him too much. But, yeah, we'll see. He, he's there just so we have someone. Yes, yeah, so that wraps up the transfer business. Again, didn't do too much in January. I didn't want to mess around too much with the squad. 
I didn't want to go out and spend loads of money. We don't have any, we don't have any wages. So I just had to keep it pretty tight, keep the wages at a level and get it lower. And I did. And the end, yeah, we, it, it's paid off already. I think, you know, four wins out of four in January. Can't complain too much. Other bits of news, Mark Milligan signed a new contract. He's going to be here for another another season as a backup option maybe next season. We'll see, but I wanted to keep him around. It's a shame his coaching attributes are horrendous because <laughs> I would have had him on as a coach as well. Uh, Johnny Miranda has signed a new contract as well for another year. Uh, he uh, is impo- Yeah, he will be an important player. He's still got time on his side. And he, as by His stats are really good. He can only improve. He can only improve. And Primi has signed a new deal as well. Nothing crazy. I haven't given anyone massive pay increases. It's just been slight ones. I hate how Primi has all these down arrows all the time. He's improved quite a lot, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, a little bit in certain things. But yeah, he's... um. He just doesn't train well, does he? But yeah, that, that's some business I've done. Yeah, I, I'm pretty happy. I'm content with the squad I have still for the rest of the season. Seraphin Ruiz was getting a few a few offers, like 2.9k, 4.5k. So just reject, re- absolutely rejecting him. He started a couple of games as well and played reasonably well for his age. So... Yeah, he's uh, he's gonna hang around. I want to try to get him on a new contract, something a little bit better. Um, keeps him around a little longer, maybe. Let's see if he can get one, get him one now. No, he, he's he doesn't want to see. But we we've got him tied down till 2023. So hopefully by then we're up in the La Liga two or something, and he'll want to. All right, so finances. Yeah, we've uh, dropped it down another two grand. Still not making any difference in the money money uh, areas, is it? You know. <laughs> five grand under budget and we still can't make money there's something wrong with the club it's not me yeah not much i can do really and it's really frustrating because i need to get my coaching badges i need to want to i want to improve the club facilities i want to you know improve everything but we're just not getting any money in and it's quite frustrating especially that batiste game (laughs) so that brings us to today's game away at harrow should be a, a a quite straightforward win for us. You never know in this league, though. Bit of news elsewhere. Cultural Inesa won 5-4 against Lagrones. Yeah, wish that. I wish that didn't happen. It does mean that they go just in front of us one point. So we definitely need to win today. Okay, here we go. I think I'm going to leave things very much unchanged i don't really want to mess around with things too much especially considering we have won four in a row i've had some players come at me this week a challenge wants more first in football b team players want new contracts a koku trained to 4.75 i criticized him and he didn't like that it's been a bit of a shambles of a week and i'm kind of regretting getting so many players into the club uh, and putting them into the B team because it is just some it just causes more issues um however it has been good in terms of sort of promoting players like Gonzalez you know we needed we needed him and he's already at the club so it's, it swings both ways I guess but yes today we are going to go unchanged from last match I think it's the best thing to do Right, it's a massive, massive away fixture. Don't know too much about them, to be honest, but they haven't performed too well this season. Right, okay, so we line up as follows. Gugashvili in goals. Tony Cock left back. Chakaroma and Primi. Donut on the right. Milligan in the midfield with Rame and Espinar. Gonzalez out left. Higon out right. And Fernandez up front. Let's get to it. Important match, boys. Come on. Come on, lads. We should be winning this one fairly comfortably. Dodgy start by us. We've had a we have had a shot. Right, let's demand more early, I think, as we have a highlight. Tony Cock. It's a Rama. He loses the ball. Cabrera's boots it forward. Primi, good touch, brings it down to Milligan. Primi looks for Donut. To Higon. Can he take on his man? Donut's coming around the outside. Goes back to Milligan. 
Ramey out to Tony Cock, a lovely little piece of play there. Can he whip it in? He can. He gone with the header and it's come off the bar. Good little play, switching it around both flanks. It is how we play, isn't it? But yeah, unlucky there. What have I seen there? That shot was from three yards out. The, another one. How are we missing from there? <laughs> another one. Why are we seeing these? Why are we seeing these highlights? We've had three shots from inside the six-yard box that missed, and we didn't see one of them. <sighs> what? I don't understand. I'm not happy. That's made me aggressive. I probably didn't need to be aggressive there, but it did. Okay, 53. Things aren't happening, are they? 60. I kind of wanted this to be a, a pretty straightforward win to bring you. But things, yeah, definitely are not happening, and I'm really not happy. Get creative. Team instructions. Uh, let's go higher tempo. We're better than them, so let's go for it. Don't need to regroup. We can counter press and we can go much higher. Let's go for it here. Just absolutely try to smash them. Subs at 75 for sure. Right, three. Miranda, Atoy, Mizoki, three up top. Change it inside forwards. You go advance forward. <laughs> if if this ends nil nil. All right, attacking. Demand more. 86. We've had more shots from inside the box. Can someone f explain that to me? Ten shots on target, and we don't even see one. One of them as a highlight. Sometimes it really, really frustrates me how they can have highlights that don't mean anything, and then non-highlights where you can see where the shot has been. The shot was from the six yard, inside the 60-yard box. And that really puts more pressure on us now. Um, okay, it mustn't be by goal difference. I thought we beat them, or we drew against them. No, we lost. Oh, okay, we've lost top, top spot. Oh, f*** off. Why are we dealing with this rubbish now? We're in the middle of the season, in the most important part. We want to win the league. And it, all the players is worried about their bloody contracts. They've got good enough contracts. You've got another year on your deal. Don't worry about it now, mate. Although he does deserve one. Fair play. Star player. Go on then. No, you're getting 450 and that's the end of it. All right, what do you want? No. No, that's the end of that. You have more, more of a goal bonus. Uh, absolutely not. Sell on fee percentage. Yeah, right, no way. No way, mate. Yeah. Big uh, promotion wage rise, but he would deserve that if we do. All right, that was uh, supremely frustrating. Uh, right, okay. I'm going to end it there. I'm going to come back uh, maybe the start of March, see how we go the next three games, uh, and then we're going to do the run-in. Uh, <laughs> the massive games at the end there culturally in SA into Madrid we'll see what happens right thanks for watching guys I really appreciate all support that's uh, been given to me over the last couple of episodes for sure um I've had a load of new viewers and um and and more interactions with people I really appreciate it hope you're enjoying and hope to see you soon for more don't forget to give it a like subscribe follow me on twitter all in the description and we, yeah we'll definitely see you soon for more cheers guys